Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. I thought I found love, but my boyfriend turned out to be emotionally abusive. Now I'm struggling to heal and move on. Me 19F and Alex 20M met online and clicked right away. We got super close over the next few months, sharing secrets and childhood stories we never told anyone else. Even though we both lived with our parents and went to different schools, we managed to hang out a bunch just talking and walking around. After a while, Alex started flirting with me. He'd send messages like, love you, I'm falling for you, and I think you're my soulmate, but I've been through stuff before, so I didn't take it too seriously at first. I joked around to keep things light, trying not to get too attached too fast. I'm a hopeless romantic and I wanted to take my time falling for him, not rush into something that might break my heart. The day after Christmas, he came over to exchange gifts. He met my parents unexpectedly, but they liked him. He gave me this heart-shaped pillow and said he wanted me to feel close to him, even when we couldn't be together. Later, we ended up making out and losing our cards to each other. New Year's came around and we couldn't meet up because of family stuff. But he showed up at my place for like five minutes right before midnight, which was so sweet. He asked for a break to focus on schoolwork, and we stopped talking for a week. During the break, he sent Snapchats hinting that he missed me, saying stuff like I miss you in French and doing things I liked. When we started talking again, he admitted those snaps were for me and said he missed me during the break. I told a friend that I couldn't just be buddies with someone I was in love with it be too painful if they didn't feel the same way. A few days later, he brought it up, and I explained that unrequited love just hurts too much for me. He seemed to get it, and we carried on as usual. During one of our usual sunset walks, he mentioned that we were together now. In our culture, we don't do the whole will you be my girlfriend boyfriend thing, we just start spending time together and acknowledge that we're a couple. His parents went away for the weekend and he invited me over for the night. This was huge since strict parental rules had always kept us from having sleepovers. He noticed I was acting a bit off I didn't even realize it and later we went to bed. I couldn't sleep, so when he dozed off, I slipped out to the couch. A minute later, he came looking for me. We ended up talking and crying together until 3 a.m. Then we went back to bed and finally fell asleep. The next day, he made pancakes and I left before his parents got back. Alex, he's a big gamer and super active on Discord, had this supportive online crew. I became friends with his Discord buddies and we'd have group video calls. In early May, he turned 18, got his driver's license, and inherited his sister's car. I made him a heartfelt birthday video with his Discord friends, which actually brought him to tears. He threw a party, and I brought my best friend along because I'm kinda shy. Some comments about Alex made me uncomfortable, but I brushed them off as harmless teen talk. We didn't spend much time together at the party, but I was cool with it. He drove me home afterward. On my 17th birthday, he gave me a song he wrote himself it was super touching, and I still cherish it. I'm not big on celebrating my birthday long story childhood stuff so I just had a small family thing. My family has a summer home in this peaceful village, about two hours from the city, surrounded by woods. In June 2021, we went there, and I worked at the local cafe as a server, like I had in previous summers. While we were there, Alex was dealing with ongoing family drama with his dad. They fought a lot. But things had gotten worse, and he was feeling really down. I'd always been there to cheer him up during tough times. One night, he decided to confront his dad to try and sort things out. I supported him before heading to bed. The next morning, my mom woke me up, saying Alex was urgently trying to reach us. Turns out, he decided to run away and was waiting for Jake, a mutual friend, to drive him to our summer house. I didn't fully grasp what was going on, but I backed his decision. The next day, after some initial worries, Alex joined my mom on errands and waited for me to finish work before we all went home together. My dad's a traditional, old-school guy who usually puts my sister's husband to work when he's around. Worried about Alex being in a new place and dealing with family issues, I asked my dad not to give him any chores. Every night, Alex would call his older sister to talk about the family problems. I'd leave the room to give him privacy. One night, after one of these calls, I heard him crying. I went in to offer support, sitting on the bed to let him know I was there. He hugged me tightly, cried, and thanked me for being there. Another time, he came into the bathroom while I was showering, teary-eyed, to tell me his mom had sent a heartbreaking email begging to fix the family issues. It really got to him because he cares about her a lot. Alex loved our summer house and the way my family interacted were pretty tight-knit. After a week, he agreed to meet his mom in a nearby town to try and work things out. Me, my dad, and Alex went to meet her. We packed up his things and said our goodbyes. But shortly after we left, Alex called, upset, asking to come back with us. We returned to his place, he explained what happened, and decided to come back to the summer house. My family and I supported him through it all. He stayed a few more days, and I made sure he felt comfortable and safe. My dad asked Alex to help with chopping wood, and Alex actually enjoyed it. He appreciated my dad's patient guidance and nice change from his own dad, who had a quick temper. My dad enjoyed working with him too, praising his skills. They even shot a hunting gun together. Alex played ball with my little brother and joined us for Monopoly nights. After a few days, his older brother came to pick him up and they managed to resolve some of the family issues. In early August, I went with Alex to his motocross race and spent time with his parents for the first time. We stayed at his family's apartment before and after the race. Later, he drove us back to the city and my family returned the next day. On August 8th, we had plans to go out, but Alex decided last minute to stay in and watch a movie. As time went by, I got super hungry, which led to our first fight. I told him to leave and he said that didn't mean we were breaking up. I cried myself to sleep that night. Realizing I was being irrational hangry much, I apologized, explaining that hunger made me act that way. But Alex was hurt and upset, and after a heated text exchange, he left and blocked me. His Discord friends tried to mediate, but he was firm and cut off contact. I went back to the summer house, and the stress gave me panic attacks and made me physically ill. 
Three weeks later, Alex reached out, saying he hated our relationship and felt he didn't deserve me. Despite arguing, we apologized and decided to give it another shot. Around this time, my dad had a serious accident, which brought us closer. We met up, had a good time, and talked about our issues. Alex admitted he'd made a pact with a girl named Emma, someone he'd tried to date before but was turned down. I was suspicious, but he insisted they were just friends. During those three weeks apart, I'd lost some weight and gained some self-love. In October 2021, we dressed up for Halloween, and Alex posted a sweet picture of me on his Instagram. In December, we went ice skating for the first time and visited a Christmas market, which he loved. In February, he asked me to go to prom with him, which I happily accepted since my school didn't have one. He told me his mom had said, I'm so happy you're with her. She makes you better and happier. I really like her, which meant a lot to me. But on Valentine's Day 2022, we had a stupid fight, and two days later, he left again. I hoped it was just a break since he hadn't blocked me. But when I reached out to support him after a rough night, he responded harshly and blocked me. I tried reaching out multiple times, but nothing. After three months, our friend Jake suggested Alex might not come back, which sent me spiraling into depression and suicidal thoughts. I'd struggled with depression and eating disorders since I was 12, and Alex knew this. After the breakup, I fell behind in school, lost friends, and didn't pass my exams. During the summer, I kept struggling while Alex went to the army. It hurt even more when I found out through pictures that he took Emma to prom. In May, he posted a song on YouTube dissing me and our relationship. At the end of summer, a friend showed me a picture of a girl wearing what looked like Alex's hoodie, hinting he had a new girlfriend. I contacted Alex, who claimed he was doing great since the breakup. Despite the harsh exchange, it pushed me to focus on myself. By New Year's, I'd become happier, healthier, and more mature, a shining light, as some people said. I made a new friend named Max, who's still important to me. Just before New Year's, Alex unblocked me but didn't say anything. Then, the day before, he reached out, wanting to talk. Despite my anxiety, I agreed. In a 30-minute call, he admitted he broke up due to stress and felt he didn't deserve me. He acknowledged mistreating me and lying about being happy after the breakup. After the call and a few texts, he blocked me again, leaving me feeling shattered. But I took it as a lesson and kept healing, focusing on school. In January, I saw his profile on a dating app but didn't interact. The day before Valentine's Day 2023, he added me again. He claimed it was an accident, but we ended up talking. It felt like we'd never been apart. He mentioned how much better I seem now probably because I'd spent the last year healing and learning to love myself. After getting back together, I found out that while we were apart, He'd seen multiple women but hadn't slept with any. That hurt because I hadn't been with anyone else I felt like it would be cheating, even though we were broken up. He started blaming me for turning Jake against him and for messages my mom had supposedly sent him, which I knew nothing about. He yelled at me. I cried. He eventually apologized, but nothing really got resolved. Not wanting to lose him again, I swallowed my feelings and let it go. One day, after being intimate, he got on one knee, just admiring me in silence. Another time, he called me wifey but played it off when I reacted. We used to fall asleep on calls but decided to stop that. One night, he fell asleep on a call, and after I wished him sweet dreams and hung up, he called back multiple times. I ended up sleeping on the call with him. The next morning, he asked about it, and when I explained, he cried and thanked me I wasn't sure why. In early March, while he was away with the army, I expressed concern about his old hip injury. He got super angry, yelled at me, called me names, and blocked me, despite my attempts to calm things down. That evening, I broke down and talked to my sister's husband. He told me I'd handled it maturely and that Alex was being immature and disrespectful. At the end of March, I had my first exam and was nervous. That night, Alex unblocked me and asked about it. I insisted he apologize for his previous outburst and after he reluctantly did, we got back together. We went for a drive and I opened up about everything that had happened. He cried and whispered, I'm so glad you're here and you'll always own a special part of my heart but then, things got weird. He started role-playing, holding my wrists tightly and putting me in uncomfortable positions. I told him to stop that he was hurting me but he didn't let go for what felt like 20 minutes. When he finally realized I was in pain, he let go and started self-sabotaging. I ended up consoling him. My wrists hurt for days, but I didn't tell him to avoid making him depressed. One day, he took me out to try new foods, taught me some driving, and we watched a beautiful sunset. He took me to his family's land, saying I was the first person he'd brought there besides family. Later, he asked for intimacy, but I declined, saying I felt used. We ended up having a playful conversation and a steamy makeout session. He talked about past relationships, calling his exes crazy in early May. Things went downhill again. He became distant. And after a conversation, he said he'd fallen in love with me again but wanted to be free and enjoy being young. We had a call where he cited trivial reasons for breaking up. I tried to accept it gracefully but ended up pleading with him. He lashed out and blocked me again. I confided in my sister, and they advised me to let him go. Over the summer, I tried to focus on myself, but my school performance suffered, and I lost friends. Alex finished his army service and joined a university near my home. I found out he'd slept with someone during a festival. It felt like cheating. Even though we were broken up, I'm struggling to heal from all this. Part of me hates him for what he's done, but another part believes he can mature and that we could be happy together. I don't know how to move on or if he could ever change. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.